Hello, good evening, everybody. So I'm Fabio Giannetti from Cisco, and I'm going to be talking about Monasca and Silometer. So when we combine Monasca and Silometer, we come up with something that's called Silosca. And I want to acknowledge my co-authors that are there in the audience. There is Srinivas Sakamuri from Cisco, and uh, Roland Okmuth and Dan Dyer from HP. So in this talk, we're going to look at why we have done such a thing of Silosca and uh, how Silometer works, how Silosca works, and then we're going to go over some of the performance testing that we have done comparing the two solutions. And we're going to give you an update of where we are with the code and the functionality we have been implementing, and then what's next uh, on the project. So before I carry on, I would like to have a quick uh, hands, out, uh, hands up of who knows about Silometer in the crowd. OK, good. And who does know about Monasca? OK, that's, uh, that's a good, uh, good mix. So the motivations, really, we are looking at the operator needs here. And so operators in handling modern clouds are handling a lot of stress with the amount of data they need to handle. So it's not just about metrics and events, but they also have to consider logs, checks, and all of this kind of data that is coming for them to evaluate the, the status and the health of the cloud they are managing. But also, they need to be able to do an end-to-end -end debugging. So it's just not enough to go and see an alarm, something red popping up in your um, console. You need to understand and dig deeper to understand at the end what really caused the problem and how to fix it. They also need to have the visibility to be able to see everything that is going to happen in the cloud at a given time. And the last but not the least important is the resource utiliz utilization. They need to understand what is the current capacity, if they have spare capacity, how they can address requirements from, for more capacity at any given time, what they can scale back, where they can add, and what they can do. So all of this ended up in a solution requirements, which is pretty complex, because we need to be able to collect a lot of data from different sources. So we need to be able to collect, you know, metrics, logs, and all this kind of stuff in one single place. We also need to be very performant and highly scalable, because if we don't scale, basically, we won't be able to do all the um, visibility and debugging that is required for a large deployment. Uh, we need to be flexible, so we need to have a processing pipeline that will allow us to do different type of evaluations. It's going to be alarming, it's going to be consolidating the data, it's going to be evaluating logs together with metrics and all this kind of stuff. And lastly, uh, the um, extensibility. So we, we won't be able to understand or forecast every type of needs and every type of tool that will be integrated. So we need to be able to, uh, be, a be able to support some uh, way of extending the platform, so other sources can be later on added. And so what is Silometer, Silosca, sorry, and, and what, what it does and, and why it's been done? So Silosca really is, in a nutshell, Silometer built on top of Monasca. And in order to do that, we have done two components. We have extended the publishing agent, and the publishing agent is the tool that collects the OpenStack related resources data, events, metrics, and things that are happening in OpenStack, and we push this into the Monasca API. The second thing we have done to allow Silometer to keep operating through the Silometer API, so for backward compatibility, basically we have implemented a storage driver into the Silometer code, which talks to the Monasca API and retrieve the data and does the conversion between the Monasca format and the Silometer format. So from a client, Silometer doesn't change at all. It's still the same as it was before. And why we have done that, why we took the trouble to go and work on this? Well, because we really wanted to have a highly scalable and performance system that supports both telemetry and monitoring. And we believe that there is a big advantage in having all this data consolidated into a single place. Because we can fire alarm, 
correlating data, we can understand better the status of the cloud, and we can do things that couldn't done before. Moreover, it's easier to maintain a single system at scale than three, four, or five. So putting everything in a single place, we believe, will give the operators insights and the ability to operate the cloud better. So we, f we see this as a win-win. We don't see any uh, 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 counterindication of a single unified solution. So looking at the big picture here, um, the green part is the part that is already available in Monasca. And Monasca currently is being moved to the OpenStack GitHub, so it's, it's in OpenStack together with the Siloska code. So the green part is the current available Monasca, and Monasca is excellent in doing the scalability and is based on a microservice architecture, and I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, so what we've done is that we attached on top of it the ability of dealing with OpenStack metrics and OpenStack notifications, which is the data that Silometer is excellent in collecting, and there's been a lot of work in uh, you know, integrating and making sure that all the services are able to send the data through the notification bus. And, um, and then we laid on top of the Monask API, Silometer API. So at the end, you get a single system that behaves as both. So the current Silometer architecture, so how Silometer works currently, and this, you know, take it with a pinch of salt, this is a very high level view of it. But fundamentally, there are the OpenStack services that have the ability of sending data to a notification bus, which usually is implemented by Rabbit. And then the Silometer agent, there are different type of agents. So there is the agent that listens to the notification agents, which with notification bus, which is called the notification agent. Then there are other agents that are doing polling because not all the services are actually subscribing to the notification bus. Moreover, some of the information that is vital for uh, telemetry is not available on the bus. So there are other two agents. Uh, one is called central agent and one is called um, compute agent. And those agents are polling data through um, uh, the API and the Python client and they retrieve the data. Once this is done, all these data, which are now called samples, are republished on a silometer specific topic, which could be on the same rabbit on queue or on a different rabbit on queue. This is depending on how you guys deploy it. But the bottom line is that everything is republished and sent to that queue. After this happens, the data is collected through a set of agents, they are called collectors which will push the data to a database. In our examples, we use MongoDB because it's the more uh, feature complete and the better performance of the lot the, of the database they are supported. So Silometer currently supports uh, MongoDB, HBase, and uh, um, MySQL, which is just for Tempest. And then the Silometer API, the V2 APIs, are inquiring directly through the storage layer, MongoDB to retrieve the data. So how Siloska works? So Siloska is not that different in the sense that it still leverage the same agents and it still get the notification, it still use the agents to do the polling, but then it sends this data directly to the Monasca API. And the way Monasca works internally is that Monasca will publish this data into a message queue which is the Monasca message queue. And differently from what Silometer does, this is based on Kafka. And uh, you know, Kafka is way, way more performant and uh, um, at scale way better than uh, Rabbit will. So once the data is here, there is another uh, component, which is a persister, which reads the data from the Kafka queue and then stores it into the database. And so, um, the open source database available are in FluxDB, and Cassandra is under development. Also, there is an HP specific, which is VertikaDB. So Monasca supports variable set of databases. For our test, we use the InfluxDB. The other thing I want to, do, to uh, focus is on the fact that the, our Silometer agent in Silosca has been extended to do batching. So we batch at the agent level and then the persister batch on its own when it consumes the data from the queue. So we have the ability to batch 
in two ways, and we can decide the size and the time of the batch independently. So we can easily configure our system to get the benefit of either speed or accuracy of data based on the two uh, batching techniques. And then what Silometer API does. Uh, go ahead, you can ask a question. So yeah, in our test, we use only one instance because I'll show you we run this on DevStack. Yeah, but InfluxDB run in a cluster, and we use 0 0.942, which allows you to cluster. Usually, it's a cluster of three nodes is what, what you will set up. And then the Silometer API talks directly to the Monask API to retrieve the data. So looking a little bit more in detail, Silometer Agent has an interface which is called the Publisher Interface. So if you look at the way Silometer works, Silometer defines a pipeline. And in this pipeline, there are uh, sources which are the meters that you want to uh, consume or work with. And then there is a bunch of transformers which can take that data and massage it into a, 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 a format which is slightly different. Once this is done, the, the, um, the last step is the publishing. So it takes the transform data and push it somewhere. The default one, as I said before, is called Notifier, and it sends the data to another rabbit. Um, there is also one that sends data directly to Kafka, but we have implemented one to send the stuff to Monasca. And so that is called the Monasca Publisher. And this is the one that has the ability also of, of batching. On top of the ability of batching, what we've done is that the messages that are coming have a lot of metadata. So we created a configuration file that allows you to select on a per meter type which type of metadata you want to carry over. Okay? So you decide, oh, this is important for me. This other stuff, I don't care about it. And that actually makes a huge difference, I will show you later, in the amount of storage benefit that we get, not throwing everything into uh, the database. On the other end, on the API, there is a base interface that implements the storage. And so that base interface has been implemented by a Monasca driver, which, again, takes a request from the API, is a model view control, takes the request and implements it, talking uh, to the Monasca API. And then it retrieves the data back. Well, also, what we have done here on the Monasca driver is that we leverage the scalability of Monasca, so we have uh, the ability of sending multiple queries. So if you are querying for a time interval of, let's say, five days, you have a configuration that can say how many threads you want to send. So it's going to split the query and send 20 concurrent queries to retrieve the five days worth of data. What we found out is that we need to make the Monasca code, the Silometer code better, because currently it waits for all this data to be compiled and then sent back. But if we use things like pagination, you can basically build your page in advance. And so when you serve it, you will get the pages beforehand. Then we decided to do some tests. So what we wanted to do is that we wanted to simulate a concept of private cloud versus a public cloud. So we want to have a sense of how different will perform when you have different type of clouds. And so what we've done is that we said, OK, you know, a public cloud, we have to have a lot more tenants than a private cloud will. And so we have five tenants on a private cloud, and we have 500 tenants on a, on a public cloud. And then we have 10 resources on a tenant, and we, sh we divided them in four compute, four volume, and two image, just to give a sense of a standard load that you will get, right? And instead, on, on the 500 tenants, we just decided to have one resource. The reason is that in the end, we wanted to end up with the same number of total uh, measurements, which was 7.5 million. So at the beginning, we were very um, optimistic that even our VMs run in DevStack will be able to support the load. Um, you, I will show you later what in reality happened. And then we had two environments we used to test. We had an environment which is a virtual machine, and that virtual machine was pretty meaty virtual machine, 16 CPUs, 32 gig of RAM, but the bottleneck ended up to be the 50 gig of root disk we had. And then we had a, a bare metal, so we had a very big server which has 96 gig and a tera of RAM. So there is where we could really run the 7.5 million load that we plan to. So how we tested it? We took actually uh, Oslo Messaging. Oslo Messaging is a load simulator, is a simulator that sends messages to the bus. So we extended that code, and it, this is also available as part of the Silometer. So you can get this tool, the Siloska, you can get this tool too uh, in the same repository. And we extended it to have some 
mock real, real messages, but we mock data in it. And so we send uh, batches of these messages over the bus, and we tested the time it took to send these messages over. And then in the case of Silometer, what we did, we tested with also time, the time it took to consume it on the Silometer bus. Once all the messages were consumed on the Silometer bus, then we knew they were all stored into the database. Then we repeat the same thing for Siloska. So in Siloska, what we did is that we had the same producer, which we timed. But then, because it doesn't republish into the queue, we actually went and measured the time it took to load all the data into InfluxDB. So this was how we performed the load tests. And these were the results. So with Silometer, basically, we couldn't complete the 4.8 million because we ran out of space on the 50 gigabyte disk. And uh, time-wise, you see the Silometer is way higher than what Siloska is. Siloska eventually failed, too, around 9 million. So I think it was around 8 million, 8.5, something like that. So the takeaways is that, on average, Siloska is three and a half times faster in consuming data for a public cloud simulation. And Siloska really consumes between two to three times less space. And why I say two to three times? Because it depends on the amount of uh, metadata you decide to push. So we put enough metadata to run a traditional bill, and then we are around two times more conservative in space. If you are very skinny, you don't need many metadata, then you can stretch it to three times. And then we did the same thing on the virtual machine for the private cloud. And uh, as you can see, in the private cloud, the amount of data that failed was the same. But overall, both systems are speedier. So there is a correlation between the fact that the more tenants you have, the slower the systems are. And this is, uh, is affected by the, uh, the two. And I, I think the reality is that there is a resource creation part that Silometer has to go through that is time consuming. So more tenants you have, more of that needs to be done. The second thing we've done is we did a query test. So now we loaded the system, we did all the uh, performance, and then we did the queries. So the way we did the query, we used curl. Okay? We didn't use the Python client, we just used curl. And what we did is that for each individual tenant, we specify an interval of time, and we query samples for a particular uh, meter. So in the case of Siloska, uh, of course, the, the query that Silometer performs goes to the Monasca API. When uh, you query on Silometer uh, itself, it goes to Mongo. And so we timed simply the, the time it took to run those queries. So we disabled Keystone because we used curl, so we don't have Keystone. And then what we did, we did at least one query for a 24-hour interval uh, time stage per tenant. And so we had at least five tenants, and for each tenant, we have 10 repetitions. So we did all of this to avoid to have false positives, right? Times were too fast. So, and then we did uh, a nine, the 90th percentile to find out what the average times are. So when we test this on the VMs, because we couldn't really go above the 2.4 million on the VMs, so we did the test starting from 300K, 600, 1.2 million to 2.4 million. And as you can see, uh, both have a kind of exponential tendency, but the Siloska one is really, really more uh, subtle than the Silometer one. So the result is that Siloska on average is two and a half times faster than the, the standard Silometer is. And this was to query those samples, for instance. Then we did the same thing when we query on a public cloud. And again, as we saw the difference in the load time, we see a significant difference in the query time. So the more amount of tenants you have, the worse the performance of Silometer will be. Now Siloska on, on, the, on the counterpart doesn't degrade that badly. So it maintains more uh, a linear behavior. And in fact, uh, the performance was astonishing. It was 11 times faster than uh, Silometer is. 
So what we found out, definitely, there is a correlation between the performance the accelerometer has and the number of tenants that you have in your club. Okay? Then we run on bare metal. And on bare metal, we could load the 7.5 million samples we were set to. Because on the VMs, we couldn't get it because we ran out of this. But with a terabyte disk, we could that easily. And so that behavior you have seen on the public cloud that I show here, right, where, you know, Siloska goes more um, slowly to increase the time is really, you know, augmented or is really exacerbated on uh, the bare metal behavior. And so the difference here was 18 times faster compared to where uh, Silometer is. But nevertheless, what we also found out is that the difference between uh, Siloska API and Monasca API is significant. So not only um, Siloska performs better than, than uh, uh, Silometer, but compared to Monasca, it's still 1.8 uh, times slower than Monasca is. Right? So we think that there is a lot of improvement that we can do in uh, bringing Siloska in pair with Monasca. I also want to stress that really the there is the other possibility is that you, if you don't need the backward compatibility with Silometer, uh, you can still query the Monasca API and get the performance benefit straight away, right? So the reason we did Silosca is that we want to have the benefits of both worlds, right? We want to have the performance that Monasca brings in, but still keep the backward compatibility with Silometer because there are, you know, users and companies that are using it and customers that are currently using the Silometer API. So what we currently support on, uh, uh, on Siloska? On the publisher, the features we have, um, we can publish, connect to the Monasca, Monasca API. We use Keystone to authenticate. So we have a, a Monasca agent like that is publishing data to the Monasca API. So it doesn't, you cannot get swamped with data that is not recognized because the Monasca publisher is a recognized agent for Monasca. We support the pipeline as is because we only change the, the, the publisher part. So everything else in the pipeline, if you guys do change on the data, on the sample, anything that you guys are doing currently will be supported because we haven't touched any of that. And also we added this configuration ability of saying which data will be of the metadata convert into dimension and which data will part of the metadata. This is very important because the way Silometer with the way Monasca works and the way uh, the time series database work in general, is that dimensions are queryable data, where instead the metadata is the one that goes with the measure. So you can do any type of query on the dimension straight away, but if you want to dig data out of the metadata, you will need to collect the data and then go and identify the different parts. And on top of that, we have implemented uh, ability to do batching. So the publisher will batch based on a time interval or on the amount of messages that you want to send over. On the Monasca driver, the one that implements the API, we have implemented simple queries for pretty much the, all the major elements, meters, resources, samples, and statistics. Uh, we support metadata also for everything but meters. And on the statistics side, we only support the most common, like aggregation, minimum, max, and all of that. We haven't done standard deviation or cardinality. We don't support pagination and group by and complex queries. Uh, actually, the pagination and group, group by, we did all of this with a kilo, stable kilo. But now in Liberty, there are limits. There are more functionality we can leverage uh, the warrant available at the kilo version. So how you can get to uh, Siloska? You can go to the GitHub, it's OpenStack Monasca Silometer, and uh, it's all in Python. And there are, you can get there the Monasca publisher code. You can get the Monasca storage or the implementation for the Monasca storage driver. You see there are all the unit tests we implemented. And then uh, we have an automated Ansible deployment that allows you to deploy a dev stack and the Monasca and brings in the Siloska pieces. And we also publish the code changes we have done
to prepare or to work with the load simulator. So you can get the entire thing, set it up on your boxes, run the load simulator, and have fun with it. Okay? The only thing you need to do is clone the repo, go into the deployer Siloska shell, and it will basically bring up a dev stack, install Monasca, install the Siloska parts, and then you will have a Siloska running at the end. Okay? So what next? So what we think we're going to do next? Well, I think next we are, we want to talk with the Silometer folks because we think the, the parts that are in, uh, developed to extend Silometer to be integrated with Monasca are really a glorified mega driver, if you want, that allows Silometer to use Monasca as a storage driver, right? It's a little bit uh, uh, overkill, but the idea is that if you already deploy Monasca, why not taking Silometer and send the data on the same place? The other thing we want to do is that we want to also extend uh, Siloska to publish events. So Monasca is in the works of supporting events natively with an events API. So the same thing we have done with the uh, metrics API, we want to now send events to uh, Monasca. So we can also store events into Monasca. The other thing is, as, you see, as I showed before, this, this different in performance that we have between Silometer, um, sorry, Monasca and Siloska API is mainly due to the fact that the JSON parser is not that efficient and that the multiple queries that we run at the same time, they're not really leveraged because of the lack of pagination and the lack of the ability of sending data Meanwhile, it's coming. So basically, Silometer uh, is waiting for all these queries to, uh, to be resolved so it can pack all the data and send a single response back. And then we want to also explore how we can collaborate with Silometer to basically integrate the alarming capability that Monasca has. Monasca has an inline alarming, which is extremely uh, efficient because basically what happens is that once a metric, a, a measurement gets into the queue, is automatically evaluated, and it doesn't need to go to the storage before it's available for the evaluation engine. So we think that the inline evaluation uh, of alarming is a valuable thing that could be used also for um, Silometer. And this wasn't uh, just uh, the work of uh, the four of us, but there was a lot of people involved. So I really want to thank the two teams uh, in uh, Cisco and in HP that work together to crank the, the, the numbers and you know, run the test and develop the code and do all of this uh, in a fairly short amount of time. This work has been done in roughly three months. OK, thank you. Any questions? Yes. How would you compare? Uh, do you? Okay. How would you compare Siloska to the new Noki uh, time series database? Uh, we haven't compared Siloska with Gnocchi for two reasons. One is that um, Gnocchi provides a different API. Right. So the idea of Siloska was to maintain the backward compatibility. So I think if you want to do such a comparison, we should really compare Monasca with Gnocchi because you have two completely different API. So if you are departing from Silometer API, you don't care about the Silometer API, then I wouldn't use Silosca to read the data back. I will use Silometer collection to feed the data into Monasca, but I will use Monasca API directly to read the data, right? Because it scales better. So we are now, the idea is not to compete uh, with Gnocchi. I think Gnocchi could be an alternative solution to store the data. I know there are some similarities. For instance, Gnocchi used time series database too. But I think Monasca architecturally has this ability of is microservice based, so has a bus in the middle, and uh, the, all these components can go and fetch data like the inline alarming and all of this. When instead Gnocchi is pretty much just a storage part, there is an API and a database and you, you call the API to store the data. So the functionality is, is rather different. Yes? Um, uh, on the scaling to the repeat, uh, today it's supported with Silometer. Does uh, Silosca retain this capability? Yes. So um, 
there is an effort in Monasca, and Roland can talk about it, um, but there is an integration going on with HEAT, and he's already working. There was actually a, a talk earlier on about this. So potentially, yes, uh, it will work uh, uh, with HEAT too. Uh, I think there is a slightly difference because uh, the way Silometer uh, works is that he repeats the alarms, right? Instead, Monasca is more like, I send the alarm, and then I, I send a status change rather than keep bombarding you with the alarm. Is So in order to keep the same functionality in it, there will be some changes that needs to be done uh, in Monasca. But they are not that significant. It's just a matter of keep alarming rather than you're doing to answer stuff. But you, you should talk to Roland because he is the one that knows all the details about it. Any any other questions? I have another one. Sure. Uh, I want to post my own metrics to Silasca. My own application metrics. Do you have a post API? Uh, so if you are, so the way Monask, the way Silometer works is that you will have to create a message, right, and then write a plugin that will interpret that message, and then it will go and send a notification. Silometer? In Silometer. I post my metrics to Silometer using the Silometer REST API. I want to do it directly to Monastic. But that, okay, so yeah, we are not supporting that uh, because that's kind of a legacy thing, right? And uh, so, but you can post your stuff to Monasca API. That's what I'm asking. Oh, to Monasca. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because that's exactly how the publisher will do, it's the same way. Any other questions, anybody? I have a question related to Monasca. Oh, you have a question related to Monasca? Yeah. Sure. Will there be a meeting tomorrow, the Monasca team? Are oh, yes. There is a Monasca team meeting at 4.30 in a, the room is S3. S3, where is this? Uh, it's uh, the Cisco room. Uh, no, it's not, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's called S3, so that's all I know. But it, Okay. Okay. So if there aren't any other questions, I want to thank you again for your time.